Hey, if you've got your first microeconomics midterm coming up here, I'm a tutor and I wrote out here five things that I just make sure you know about supply and demand heading into your test. And real quick, if you need my help with the rest of your semester too, go check out my microeconomics cram kit on my site. Free access to all 95 of my concept breakdowns that just step-by-step -step walk you through each concept in about a minute each. For starters here, I wanna make sure you understand equilibrium. Super simple, but it's that intersection point between the current supply and demand curves, resulting in this price here, P1, on on the y-axis and this quantity q1 on the x-axis all right that's literally it for the first point here the second thing i want to make sure you understand is how shifts work in supplier demand let's say that supply increases to s2 here remember it's increasing because it's shifting right well now our equilibrium point would fall right here at that new current supply curve and the old demand curve, resulting in this change to P2. Notice how price is now falling at this new equilibrium point and this new quantity at Q2, resulting in an increase in equilibrium quantity here. All right, the third thing I wanted to cover with you guys is quantity supplied or demanded versus shifts in supply or demand. Changes in price are associated with changes in quantity on the X axis, not the entire curve shifting. Price is the only thing that can change quantity supplied. And the shifters of supply, like the number of sellers in the market or technology that's available, those are the only things that can shift the entire supply curve. All right, onto the fourth thing. This one's honestly super simple, but I just wanna make sure you understand how the law of demand and supply work visually. Let's start here with uh, law of supply. The law of supply is why the supply curve is upward sloping, because as price increases, suppliers or producers are willing to supply it more and more to the market. That's why like down here, when the price is super low, the quantity supplied is low. But up here, when the price is super high, the quantity supplied is also high. That's it. all you gotta know about the law of supply. The law of demand is the inverse of it. If prices are high, the quantity demanded by consumers is low because it's expensive for consumers to buy the goods so they're gonna demand less units. Versus when prices are low here, the quantity demanded is higher. The goods are cheaper, they're getting a better deal and they're able to afford more units. All right, lastly here, I wanna make sure you understand how to solve for equilibrium when you're given equations and then next we'll do tables. All you gotta do with the equations is set them equal to one another. And then from there, solve for P, AKA price. And then from there, plug that price into either equation. You're gonna get the same quantity value. Because remember, this is equilibrium. This is that point at which those curves intersect and the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. And just to prove it, I'm gonna show it with both equations. What this means is that at equilibrium, at a price of $3, quantity demanded and quantity supplied both equal 25 units. What about with a table right here? How could we find equilibrium? Honestly, tables are super easy. All we gotta do is find the price at which quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. And if we can't find any, just find the one that's closest. But lucky for us, we can find right here at $2, we have both a quantity demanded and quantity supplied of 30 units. That means that's equilibrium in this market.